I guess I look to my influences, um, which has just helped form my sense of humor. Like, um, I like very direct, honest comedy, and sometimes um, too honest or cringeworthy um, stories. I really like personal stories. I think that's always most interesting when you're deriving your stories and your characters. Right, what you know. Yeah, off of people you know, people who make you laugh, laugh in real life. Um, and yeah, I've been influenced by like Pee Wee's Playhouse and um, Wes Anderson's films, uh, Flapjack, which was on Cartoon Network. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. It's kind What's of doing positive? what you like. Do what you like, do you write in, in the same room, in the same pajamas, in the same time of the day, or like, what's your method? Like, how do you get into a groove to write? Um, well, usually it starts with concepts. It's really nice now that I have, I have pretty quickly had my characters um, formed, and so it was about just deciding what would be fun stories to tell, and kind of diving, in. since my characters struggling through puberty, kind of like diving into my memories, um, getting stories from that, and uh, yeah, so I guess just when I have an idea for a story, I kind of write from there, and um, yeah, I really try to think about what I find funny, that's always the best starting point. Hopefully you have a good sense of humor. Right, it's just tough. Like if if you guys have read the uh, the creator playbook, you notice there isn't really a section about that. It's just such a big topic. Like how to be funny. That's you could fill an encyclopedia with it, right? With how to get in there, and you still wouldn't really teach it. It's it's an elusive craft. And uh, like I personally recommend getting in and breaking down your favorite stuff. If you have a favorite comedy, it's favorite TV series. Go find the script. There's always transcripts online for just about anything that's pretty popular. Someone's written it down, typed it, and launched it on some blog or Wikipedia or something. Get in there and break it down. Where, you know, what, when did it get set up? When did it pay off? Was there, you know, um, was there how many jokes in the first page of the script? And just really start dissecting it. Turn it into a science. That's my two cents on, on how to get into writing. That, that, Go that, for it. That, more that, fart that, jokes. Fart jokes. <laughs> Huge. And on top of our jokes, I recommend great comedy pacing. And I think this is something also that it's a craft that takes years to learn. It's the same, you know, you could give me, you know, Jerry Seinfeld's whole routine and I would just ruin the thing on stage, right? It's all about the timing and the, the setup and the exact moment to drop that, that payoff. So um, I, the same thing happens in editing. Um, you know. Anyone could speak to sort of like how to hone that and how to seek that that timing and like any anything about pacing or timing or cutting, especially in the first twenty seconds of an episode, I think are critical. Yeah, I, oh. Emily. Well, I was just gonna say um, I try to get people, actors who I really admire, and sometimes just friends, but friends who I think have a good sense of humor and who are creative and just naturally funny, if, even friends who aren't professional actors, if you're doing this, you know, on a cheaper budget and you can't hire actors, well-known actors, anyone like that, sometimes you just have a, a group of people you know who you trust to make you laugh. And, um, anyway, so sometimes that would uh, dictate timing was how the actors naturally read my writing or yeah. performed it. And is, you, is the timing of a piece that you create, is it, um, do you nail it on the first pass of, of cutting together an animation? Is it something that continually gets adjusted throughout the production? Um, I usually figure out my timing with a radio play, which is the audio of the, all the voices. And so I try to time it as closely as I can myself before it gets um, hand it off to the animator. So that's how mm -hmm. I work. Usually. Yeah, it's a, it's a great process because we've always thought at Mondo that you could kind of tell if something's going to pop without even looking at it. You could just hear it. It's like the, the voice acting, you, you, you 
popped your, you know, the timing and the pacing and, and all that stuff is all there. And it's like, yeah, of course the visuals add to it. But you kind of know. We can, we can kind of tell before we see it up on its feet. Dan, you had something maybe to talk about, or Eric? Yeah, I was just going to say that a lot of times people have a tendency to, when they come up with a really good, funny joke or an idea, that they want to kind of save that. I know personally, I, I always want to save that for like the last bit of the video, you know, for the end on a big laugh, which you always do want to do if you're making a comedy, but a lot of times you, it, it's a good argument to actually move that to the front of the video. Like you said, you want to grab people in the first 10 seconds. If they see something really funny in the first 10 seconds, they're going to be way more willing to watch the rest of the video. It's worth repeating, you know, if you've probably heard it, if you've read the playbook, or if you're an expert on YouTube, you know that, you know, they're saying, I think, two seconds is the beginning of when clicks, or people start clicking away. So, uh, and I think, you know, there's resources in Google Analytics, of course, where you can go in and start seeing your audience disappear over time in a graph. If you want to get geeky on it, it's a really great resource, but just know that you better be just reaching through the screen, grabbing that person, and just shaking them to stick around. You've got to get out there, out of the gate, really hot. But that, does, that doesn't necessarily mean that. That doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be some kind of big brash opening. Um, it's something that we talked about at Frederator as we made the transition from television into these uh, into our internet cartoons. You know, which we'd like to keep around four to five minutes uh, a piece. And about how are we going to pace it? Are we going to have, uh, we decided early on that we're not going to have theme songs, that we're going to get right into the action. Uh, for most of our cartoons and, and shorts, we have cold opens. And, you know, our titles, uh, our title cards will come in, you know, five or six seconds in for a second and get out. We don't put lots of credits on the end. You know, it's really about the, uh, it's really about the narrative. In terms of pacing, how we've changed it for the internet, we haven't really, um, you know, there's just a natural pacing with our storytellers, the way they like to tell stories, um, you know, it's certainly different than the pacing from uh, the stuff that I watched on TV, you know, it's different from the Rockford Files, you know, but, um, you know, it's not that much different than, say, Family Guy or, or even Adventure Time. So, yeah.